There's no room for two Batmans in this world. Yeah, well why don't you do something about it? Yeah, I'll do something about it. Watch me. I have a better suit. I have bigger biceps. My eyebrows are raised higher than yours. There's nothing that you have that can beat me. You know, it's kind of hard to take anything you just said seriously when your chest is barely reaching my abs. Yo! Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Hello and welcome to another episode on the Ken O.E. channel and today as promised we will be talking about the Bat of Gotham the SH figure art Batman Justice League version so starting with the Bat Box a dark colored theme with the figure plastered at the front although a little bit hard to tell with this named big bold scratched up letters and the Justice League logo at the top and also the SH figure arts words in reflective silver and at the side and at the bottom more mention of his name in case you forgot and on the other side you have him standing to instill fear on you and at the top you have the bat logo and turning to the back you have his cool poses with a few highlights on the accessories for ages 15 and up well I'm almost twice that age, so the joke's on you! <laughs> I'm not crying, I'm just awed by this box design. Let's take a closer look at Batman. Well, hello Mr. Affleck, I mean Master Wayne. The face sculpt looks pretty good, although the eyes does seem cockeyed in some angles. I'm assuming they were using this picture as a reference. They molded the raised eyebrows, the nose right up to Mr. Affleck's frown. But if you want to be nitpicky about it, you can say they didn't put his beard in. And to that I say, well, sometimes Alfred shaves Batman when he's asleep. You cannot prove that's not true. Master Wayne, I'd like to... Selena. What? What's that? Oh! My beard! No! Criminals won't fear me now! And finally, they made the cape out of cloth. Just like the Dark Knight version, it's soft, and there's a wire on the side if you want to pose the cape as well. And moving along to his scalp, I really like his muscularity. As you can tell, this Batman goes to the gym. Bulky frame, huge arms, huge quads, very nice build. There's also texture along the base of his body and also the bat sign itself, which doesn't really stand out from afar, but I appreciate the fact that it's there. And of course, they even molded the padding, so looking at the design, Master Bruce needed extra padding on his side shoulders, his biceps, and all individual ab. Because obviously he doesn't want to lose all those muscles in a battle, so extra protection there, Alfred. How are you still alive? I would have been dead if not for my bat ab padding. I, I, I never thought of that. Of course you didn't. Only a person as paranoid as me would have thought of that. That's why I'm Batman. And you change your name because your shot didn't render me dead. Oh, the, lamp the paint application from SH Figures is once again amazing. The copper gold blends with the look of this figure. There's even shadings on some areas to help highlight his toned muscles, but putting on the nitpicky hat once again, I really can't tell if the color scheme is 100% accurate to what's depicted in the movie. I'm not sure if the camera is able to capture it, but putting the Mayfax Batman vs Superman figure next to him, as you can see, the greys are much lighter in comparison and there's also a little bit of a bluish hue, so it makes it look like a bluish grey at certain angles and I can understand if they were using Using this image as a reference, as the base grey in this picture looks much lighter, but bringing up the other images, it just seems that the greys are just constantly dark, to the point it's difficult to distinguish the bat logo on his chest. But then again, I've yet to watch the movie, so I can't really confirm whether or not this is accurate to the movie version. Also, this copper gold is a lot more distinguished in this figure than it is in the movie stills. Another small gripe which can be overlooked, and maybe it's just my figure, is that the joints are not consistent in the way that the right arm is much more loose than the left, and as you can see, turning the right arm turns the ball joint whereas on the left it remains. So it will be a hassle to try and turn each part individually and this is exactly why we need a bicep twist. I say that if I were to judge this figure's design by its own then the contrast really helps bring out the little features in its design and overall the muscularity and details given really makes this a good looking figure but whether or not it's accurate to what's depicted on the silver screen is still debatable. Articulation. It's from SH Figure Arts, of course it's amazing, right? Well, 
Head and neck is connected on the ball joint, although the neck is a little bit stiff. Twist. Up and down. Although the neck seems to be limited when looking down. Pivot. Butterfly joint. Up and down. Left and right. Arms can do the 360 but goes outwards at the top. As you can see, the arm joint has a lot more room for it to swivel in comparison to the Spider-Man one, which is why it's more of a hassle for my Spider-Man's arm to swivel. Arm swivel to replace the beautiful bicep twist. Double jointed elbows, which is limited by the bulk of his arm guard and biceps. Wrist breaking 360. Move up and down. Upper and lower ab cut. Twist king at the top and at the bottom. Side to side, pivot. Arch backwards pretty far. Can't crunch forward that much. Why? I told you not to wear those ab paddings. If you twist his core to the side, he can crunch forward a lot more, but it looks extremely awkward. So I guess this is a design flaw. Legs, pull down. Spread them wide. Thigh, swivel. Bend the knee. Feet breaking 360. Move up and down. But you have to tuck boot under the leg for it to bend upwards. Ankle, pivot, and of course, the twinkle toes. So not the best of SH Figure's articulation, but it's still a good amount given to this figure, though I still wish this Batman had better ab crunch and of course, the bicep twist. And moving on to Batman's armory. Three additional pairs of hands, one batarang, a gasoline gun with, I want to say, hook reload? Starting with the hands, he already comes equipped with thug punching hands, save me Batman hands, a hand to hold the batarang, and also a hand to hold the gatling gun. I like to highlight that it's much harder to swap his hands now as it has a flat surface and a hole as opposed to having a cave design. So there's nothing to stop the ball joint from moving around. So what I had to do was start from the edge and push in and slowly work the ball joint in. So it's a small hassle which can be overlooked but I thought you guys might be interested to know. So moving on to the weapons. Here you have the Batarang, nice metallic silver paint and of course, sharp, so play with caution. Rate of losing this, 90%. If you don't keep this safe, and why only 90? Because the other accessory, the hook reload. Now this has a soon to be missing percentage of 99%. So definitely keep this one locked and secure. To attach this reload, simply remove this another 99% loose rate clip from the gun and pack into the hole and you have the gun up and ready. And taking a closer look at the gun, very nicely detailed and painted, you got the silver highlights in certain areas to add more depth to the detail. And that's it. Maybe I'm just comparing this to the previous Batman package which is probably why I'm feeling a little bit underwhelmed with the amount of accessories given to this package. And here he is standing next to other figures and why is he so short? Pause! Really? Come on, SH Figure Arts! So, in summary, if I'm judging this figure by its own without factoring in how it looks in comparison with the movie version, then I can say it's still an awesome looking figure. However, with a few design flaws which limit certain aspects of its articulation, and most importantly, the disappointing scale of this figure which may be off-putting to some collectors looking to pose this figure next to others, it really let down this entire package. However, looking at this as a whole, it is still a great package to have. This figure could have been amazing if not for the points mentioned, but if you could overlook those factors then I'm sure you guys will enjoy this figure as well. That concludes today's episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did don't forget to leave a like and if you're new, welcome to my channel and hit that subscribe button for more content about toys, sketches and more. Let me know your thoughts about this figure in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you guys very much for watching today's episode. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll be reviewing the Figma Deadpool DX version. And I hope you guys are embracing your inner Batman and having an amazing day. Stay awesome, stay geeky, and I'll see you guys at the next video.